So, are you sick of hearing about masks yet? I am. I am honestly so done with this whole mask thing. If I never see another mask related segment on the news, if YouTube doesn't recommend a single another mask video, it's gonna be bliss. Unfortunately though, things don't look to be cooling off anytime soon, and that means one thing. Actually, it means two things. The first is that if official narratives can change so quickly, that should have a dramatic impact on the amount of stock that you put into them. The second thing, is that if you're gonna take masks seriously, you might as well do it right. Okay, so despite getting bounced around from, they'll do more harm than good. Two. Well, we might maybe recommend their use. Two. Yay, guys, these bad boys will really put the M in mandatory. The way masks work hasn't radically changed in the past couple weeks. The fact that public policy keeps shifting doesn't change what masks themselves do and don't do. All in all, masks have one job. They need to filter all the air that comes into your nose and mouth. All of it, bar none, without exception. And the thing about surgical masks if you were thinking that eggplant was harsh, is that they work off the assumption, you're sick, and that you need me to contain, your contagiousness, to your own personal bubble, you sterilize, if you can even call it that, what you put out, and not what you take in, that's BS, if you're gonna wear a mask because, the virus is circulating, you're only being reasonable if you want it to protect, you, Anyway, if you DIY your mask, wanting protection means, first off, that you need a filtering layer between the front and back pieces of your mask. I know sometimes you'll get recommended coffee filters or a bunch of folded up paper towels, but actually, I've seen flex foam interfacing is supposed to be in line with CDC guidelines. If not, get some HEPA filter cloth to actually have something worth a damn in there, but protection also means you need to not give, all that air, you're breathing in, any other way that it can take, because if you don't, then it's a given that at least some air will naturally fill that space, that gap between your mask and your face, no matter the shape of your face, there's two areas that are gonna be problematic as far as mask fit, one of them is the sides of your cheeks, which is probably the easiest to adjust using an extender between the elastic straps at the back. The other, and bigger problem area is the bridge of the nose. To cut to the chase, what that means is that your mask absolutely needs a nose strip, because that can mean the difference between your mask tenting on your face, versus sticking down to your nose and cheekbones like it should. Well, to help with that, here are a bunch of inexpensive household options, for you to consider using for a nose clip, whether you're making a sewn or a no sew DIY mask. Obviously, to secure the nose clip to your mask, use either, some good double sided tape, or, a hot glue gun, something that gives you bendy sticking power basically, first up. So inexpensive you get it for free with your bread, is the metal clip that holds your bread bag closed. Assuming you buy your bread from the supermarket, that you can still find bread, wherever you're doing your shopping, and that you don't just automatically, throw the clip out as soon as you open your bread. Not that anyone just reflexively, throws stuff out before remembering that it might be useful. Anyway. Still looking around for ways to raid your pantry. You can use a coffee bag tie to secure your mask to your face. Cutting it in half will probably be plenty fit for purpose. And if you're worried that the metal ends could end up poking into your skin, wrap them in a bit of electrical tape before gluing the coffee bag tie to the inside of your mask. Behind door number three, we have twist ties. Now, these could be the twist ties that came, 
with your various USB or HDMI cables, and those I never throw out, go figure, or they could be the twist ties that maybe came with your freezer bags, just fold the twist ties into a workable, wide piece, and secure to the inside of your mask. Now, if the idea of freezer bags that aren't Ziploc has you breaking out in hives, don't worry. You can instead use coated gardening wire, which is basically a twist tie roll. Just snip a good length of wire and fold it down on itself to get something wide and sturdy enough to cup your nose. Not really into gardening? Maybe your crafting arsenal includes pipe cleaners. Just use a short one as is, or cut a long one in half, to glue to the inner front of your mask, and you're good to go. Looking for a more run-of-the-mill household item? Well, it doesn't get more ubiquitous than a paper clip. They're a bit rigid for me personally, since I have pretty sensitive skin. But coated paper clips are honestly kind of perfect here because they're so easy to mold into shape over and over. I mean, everything on this list is actually good for using over and over, which lines up with the fact that one of the reasons we're even making DIY masks in the first place is the ability to reuse the mask itself. It's just that paper clips are likely to be that much more durable than most of these other nose clip options. To make your nose strip, obviously just straighten the paper clip out, wrap the ends in a bit of electrical tape if they look like they might start poking out of the coating. Then go ahead and sandwich the straightened paper clip in at the top of your mask. Finally, and I'll admit this is my favorite. An espresso capsule. Why is this my favorite? Because I'm always looking for things to do with my used coffee capsules. To make a nose clip out of an aluminum espresso capsule, cut it in half, use scissors to cut off the bottom ridge and the dome at the top. Straighten that middle piece you're left with, and then fold it down so your nose strip isn't too thin. And if you're looking for things to do with the used coffee inside your capsule, I've included a link for you below. Also included, a link to a sewn mask tutorial using flex foam, and a link to a no-sew mask tutorial using a handkerchief and a piece of filter cloth. Bonus links to an edit and a crochet mask extender pattern. Foam interfacing seems to be available at Walmart. And Hipa cotton can be ordered off eBay and Amazon. Thanks for watching, and take care.